Welcome back to our channel everyone. We'll be discussing the Iron Sheik's final words in today's video, one of the most infamous WWE wrestlers ever. Many of you are aware that the Iron Sheik was a controversial wrestler because he frequently portrayed an anti-American antagonist. He was a standout in the world of WWE due to his outspoken personality, abilities in the ring, and controversial storylines. Let's, however, examine his final words more closely as he bids us goodbye. His persona was one of the things that made the Iron Sheik such a controversial figure. As previously stated, he frequently portrayed an anti-American antagonist, which did not go over well with some of the wrestling fans. As the United States was in the midst of the Iran hostage crisis, many believed that the character of the Iron Sheik was based on the political climate at the time. In any case, no matter what the political inspirations driving his personality, there's no rejecting that the Iron Sheik was a fabulous grappler who pushed the limits of what was satisfactory in the realm of expert wrestling. Hossein Hoshra Ali Waziri was an Iranian-American professional wrestler, amateur wrestler, and actor. He was better known by his ring name, the Iron Sheik. He was born on March 15, 1942, and died on June 7, 2023. He won the WWF World Heavyweight Championship in 1983, making him the only Iranian champion in WWE history. This person, crested during the 1980s WWF Wrestling Blast, and his competition with Mass Hogan transformed Hogan into one of the best TV legends of the 10 years. Later, he and Nikolai Volkov formed a tag team that won the WWF Tag Team Championship at the first WrestleMania. He was elected to the WWE Hall of Fame in 2005. A heel all through the 1980s, Sheik later acquired notoriety on Kid Chris, The Howard Hart Show, and The Web because of his shoot interviews, revolting language, and Evan Sierra's abhorrence for a portion of his kindred expert grapplers, especially Hogan and Brian Blair. Hoshiro was born on September 9, 1942 in Damgan, Iran, and grew up in a working-class family with little money and no running water. However, the true nature of his relationship with Hogan has been disputed. Although his passport stated that he was born on March 15, he actually turned 9 on September 9 because his family follows both the Gregorian and the Solar Hadri calendars. When he was younger, he idolized Iranian Olympic gold medalist wrestler Golam Reza Takti and he went on to become well known as an amateur wrestler. He likewise functioned as a protector for Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi and his family for a few years. Hoshro sought a spot in Iran's Greco-Roman wrestling crew for the 1986 Summer Olympics in Mexico City. He then moved to the U.S. and turned to the associate mentor of two U.S. Olympic crews during the 1970s. In 1971, he was the Novice Athletic Association Greco-Roman Wrestling Champion and gold medalist at 180.5 pounds. He later became colleague mentor to the USA group for the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich. Promoter Verna Gagne made the offer to Koshro to become a professional wrestler in 1972. Hoshiro wrestled for Gagne's American Wrestling Association after receiving instruction from trainer Bill Robinson at Gagne's wrestling camp. He also taught Ricky Steamboat, Greg Gagne, and Jim Brunzel how to wrestle. Hoshiro first wrestled as a face in the preliminary matches before a promoter suggested that he adopt a heel gimmick similar to that of the Notorious Sheik. Hoshiro agreed and he adopted what would become his signature look. He shaved his head uncovered, grew a conventional buffalo-style mustache, added wrestling boots with a toe nestled into gesture to his ethnic foundation which, as indicated by Hoshro, was a thought from Jimmy Snuka. He likewise presented the Persian clubs, a game in his local Iran, and moved grapplers to do however many swings as him. His Iranian contrivance got consideration because of the occasions of the Iranian Revolution. Taking the name the incomparable Hossein Middle Easterner, he brought home his most memorable championship, the Canadian label group title, with an accomplice that Texas prohibit. In 1978, he wrestled in Japan against opponents like Steve Day and Antonio Inoki. At house shows, Dairon Shaken decisively matched up with the backland again and primarily defeated the title against Chef Jay Strongbow, Pat Patterson, and Salvatore Bellamo. He only defeated Jobbers on national television, but on live prison broadcast from the Spectrum in Philadelphia on January 21, 1984, he wrestled Tito Santana. In late 1996, the Sheik teamed up with his old foe, Bob Backlund, to manage WWF wrestler The Sultan, who had a Middle Eastern gimmick. This match was later included in WWE's Legends of Wrestling 3 compilation. Sultan was under his direction until December 1997. He also co-managed Tiger Ali Singh during the summer of 1997 with Ali's father, Tiger Jeet Singh. By the end of the year, he had failed a second drug test, which he had referred to as a medicine test, and he was released. Tyron Sheik won the Gimmick Battle Royale, a match between other well-known or bizarre wrestlers from the 1980s and 1990s on April 1, 2001 at WrestleMania X7.
The villainous Sheikh, who had developed something of a cult following among wrestling fans, was cheered as a fan favorite rather than being booed for winning. He wiped out Hillbilly Jim to win the fight Imperial and was quickly gone after by previous adversary accomplice Sergeant Butcher who put him in his Cobra grasp. In 2005, preceding WrestleMania 21 in Los Angeles, the Iron Sheik was accepted into the WWE lobby of popularity by his long-lasting adversary and previous accomplice, Sergeant Slaughter. He and Jimmy Snuka participated in a taped segment on June 11, 2007, episode of Raw, in which they expressed their gratitude to WWE owner, Fitz McMahon. He approached McMahon's executive assistant, Jonathan Coachman, on June 18th, episode of Raw, about having his own interview show on Raw. I like the idea, and I really like to take time to consider it, Coach replied. On August 13, he appeared on a WWE version of American Idol-themed episode of Raw that was taped at Madison Square Garden. Sheik appeared alongside Nikolai Volkov, and Volkov performed the Soviet anthem. The Walk 10, 2018, release of Crude highlighted rematches from past WrestleManias. Iron Sheik showed up with Nikolai Volkov to go head-to-head -head against the US Express in a rematch from primary WrestleMania. They were interrupted by Julian Hall, who came out to sing the song Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen, which was the U.S. Express's entrance song during their fight in 1985. He became a household name in 2004 thanks to his MWF studio shoot interview DVD in which he discusses his animosity toward Brian Blair, Hulk Hogan, Jake Roberts, and others. On the 10th anniversary of SmackDown on October 2, 2009, he appeared backstage arguing with Sergeant Slaughter, then choke on a shrimp with Hurricane Helms' assistance. With Rowdy Roddy Ripper and Luis Guzman, he appeared on Raw on November 16, 2009 during the show's opening segment. During that segment, he displayed his dominance by displaying an LJN WWF action figure of himself in Hulk Hogan. On the November 15, 2010 version of Crude, as a feature outdated topic, Iron Sheik showed up with Nikolai Volkov singing the Soviet public song of praise prior to being intruded on by Santiano Morella and Vladimir Kozlov, the last option of whom then, at that point, sung a two-part harmony with Volkov of the Russian public hymn. He then continued to yell about Mass Hogan until his mouthpiece was cut off, which would end up being one of his last WWE appearances. In 2023, the Iron Sheik was highlighted on an episode of memoir, WWE Stars. Let's get down to the main subject of the video for today, the final words of Iron Sheik. The Iron Sheik's death was announced by his family in November 2021 at the age of 81. It's generally hard to acknowledge the death of somebody we appreciate. However, it's encouraging to realize that the Iron Sheik's last words were loaded up with adoration and appreciation. Marissa, the Iron Sheik's daughter, claims that I love you were his final words. The Iron Sheik's character can be seen in this simple phrase. Regardless of his dubious persona and amazing character, by the day's end, he was only a caring dad and granddad who really focused profoundly on his loved ones. Final thoughts from the Iron Sheik serve as a reminder that even the most divisive people in our lives can be loved and cared for. In the world of professional wrestling, the Iron Sheik was a man who pushed the boundaries of what was acceptable, but he was also a man who deeply loved his family. His passing is a misfortune for the wrestling local area, however his heritage will live on through the recollections and stories shared by the people who knew and cherished him. I appreciate you watching today's video. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed learning about the Iron Sheik's final words and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Be safe until next time.